So um, this talk is about a uh, functional biochemical analysis of uh, tumor cell metabolism based on a uh, tracer technology itself that is able to trace or uh, follow uh, metabolic changes that are introduced to tumor cells um, based on various treatments. I have uh, heard about uh, deuterium depleted water from a, uh, from a friend of mine in Los Angeles um, who was um, um, interested in uh, finding out what is the biochemical underlying biochemical pathways that are altered by uh, deuterium depleted water. So then I, I got in touch with Gabor and uh, obtained the um, appropriate um, a specimen or, or deuterium depleted water for the in vitro type of experiments that I'm going to talk about uh, this afternoon. So um, the, the main um, goal of the study was to find out how these tumor cell lines, including a pancreatic cancer, adenocarcinoma cell line, lung cancer cell line, and a breast, breast cancer cell line would um, alter their metabolic finger Prints or imprints in response to deuterium uh, depletion in their culture media. And uh, the tracer that we used is a uh, glucose molecule that has uh, 13C substitutions in the first and second car carbon positions, and I'm going to show you what they are used for. Um, so we measured um, what we call metabolic fluxes or uh, exchanges of carbons uh, between glucose and various other uh, metabolites in the cells that include a whole list of uh, intermediates as well as products that I'm going to talk about in more details. So the, the main um, aim was to find out what is the underlying mechanism of um, altering cell proliferation of uh, in vitro grown tumor cells, and uh, we were keeping in mind that there may be uh, certain markers of toxicity and how selective the, the deuterium depleted water is on various biochemical reactions as well as how efficacious um, this particular treatment modality is. So um, the approach we took was um, we actually restored culture medium powder uh, in various concentration, in various uh, strengths of deuterium depletion, and we looked at from the culture medium, glucose lactate, carbon dioxide, and glutamate as the product of glucose metabolism. And uh, <clears throat> from the cell pellets, um, after uh, incubating the cells for 72 hours, we looked at various fatty acids and their synthesis patterns, including uh, myristate, palmitate, stearate, oleic acid, arachidic acid, as well as uh, <clears throat> we determined what is the contribution of glucose-derived carbons to fatty acid synthesis, as well as RNA ribose synthesis patterns in the pentocycle. And there are many details of these synthesis patterns that can be um, mapped by a tracer glucose uh, substrate, which I'm going to show you in, 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 in short. But, but anyways, uh, it's really truly um, the main idea is just uh, finding out what is the metabolic adaptation or what is the metabolic response of these tumor cells to, um, um, to de deuterium depletion. And the markers or the, the end biological endpoints included glucose uptake from the culture media by these tumor cells lactate production from glucose. We do know that tumor cells are uh, sugar junkies and they actually utilize and use glucose very intensely uh, for survival as well as for proliferation. We were interested in how much and what fraction of that glucose gets completely oxidized in the uh, TC cycle, which is uh, the CO2 product of, uh, of the glucose tracer. We were interested in finding out how TC cycle anaprotic flux is changing in response to deuterium depletion. Um, anaprotic flux means the anabolic use of glucose. So any glucose that is not disposed or any substrate that is not disposed in the form of 13CO2, then uh, it's used for some kind of a, an exchange or, or um, 
net production of uh, TC cycle metabolites or intermediates. They're interested in glycogen synthesis, de novo fatty acid synthesis, their elongation, desaturation, and acetic enzyme A contribution from glucose and the pentose cycle. So these studies are um, fairly robust as far as um, restoring the metabolic map that is behind any physiological change, if there is any. And I have to tell you, I'm the skeptic scientist kind, so I was not expecting to find any major change in the metabolic network in uh, deuterium deplete, depleted media. In fact, uh, there, there were. And uh, to, to my surprise, some of them were very um, evident, clear, and, and were very much in line uh, with uh, some mechanistic studies that we did with uh, certain pharmaceutical drugs in the cancer uh, area of primary primase in, uh, kinase inhibitors, and, and truly there was uh, some uh, functional and, and mechanistic understanding that we could, at least in these three cell lines, we could um, report back to um, uh, Gabor as well as we presented them at uh, various meetings. So the method that we used were practically the usual scenario where we separate the media and cell pellets, we extract these metabolites, which I described you a few minutes ago, and chemically derivatize these um, metabolites, and then gas, we use gas chromatography and mass spectrometry to determine the positional enrichment with 13C in the products. We use the chemical ionization as well as uh, electron impact ionization in some uh, metabolite analysis, and we selected monitor, we were selectively monitoring certain ions of these target meta metabolite clusters, and then we determined the mass isotopomer distribution in these uh, products of glucose metabolism. Um, our primary interest is to find out, and this is the scheme that shows you how the technology works. Um, um, we were primarily interested in, in how glucose entry or how glucose intake would uh, change in response to um, deuterium depletion and how specific reactions related to glycolysis as well as production of certain intermediates and products, for example, fatty acids and complete substrate oxidation as well as glycogen turnover, how, what is the effect of uh, deuterium depletion on uh, on uh, uh, intermediary, intermediary metabolism. Uh, in particular, we were interested in what is the effect of deuterium depletion on the oxidative branch of the pentose cycle and the non-oxidative branch of the pentose cycle. <clears throat> now, the oxidative branch of the pentose cycle is particularly interesting because this is the chain of reactions or the committed steps for nucleic acid ribose synthesis, and in the meantime, while glucose is oxidized directly on the first carbon, there is NADPH produced, which is the producing equivalent and the source and the strength for uh, de novo fatty acid synthesis and cholesterol synthesis. Interestingly, um, uh, this particular chain of reactions uses water as the source of hydrogen. So. Um, we were uh, looking at these fluxes in, uh, with particular interest. And then following down the line, the fate of, of glucose, we were obviously interested in various other products, including lactate and citric acid cycle, or Krebs and Uri cycle metabolites, as well as fatty acid synthesis. Labeling in glycogen from glucose can be through direct pathways as well as through gluconeogenesis. So glycogen analysis would allow us to um, determine um, many uh, reversible as well as the irreversible reactions or the side-passing uh, reactions of glycolysis. Particularly, there are PEPCK activities and uh, the fructose biphosphate cleaving um, activities that are actually irreversible processes in gluconeogenesis, yet we were um, looking at glycogen just to find out how overall metabolism of these tumor cells is affected. Um, so uh, just to give you a highlight of how the technology works, uh, throughout the schemes there is going to be these red carbons which are 
13C or heavy carbons of glucose uh, or glucose carbon substituted, substituted with heavy uh, 13C isotopes. And then um, based on the positional enrichment as well as the number of carbon substitutions in their positions, we can actually determine what type of biochemical reaction did participate in producing um, the intermediates that we were interested in studying. And uh, more specifically, this is how this glucose molecule looks like. Um, there are two 13C carbons in the first and second position. And uh, the, the reason using this carbon design in glucose is because it's the most effective in studying metabolism. And actually, there's a, there's a recent paper from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology um, for uh, participants who are not familiar with what MIT is. They are the, they are, it's a Boston-based private research uh, facility, and they are the ones who send people on the moon. They are certainly regarded as the uh, one of the most uh, prestigious research institutes um, in the United States. And actually, they have reported just very recently, citing our papers, that this tracer has the highest precision scoring in metabolomics type of studies. Uh, so um, the, the experimental design included incubation with the tracer. I'm going to present data at the 72 yeah. hours time point. We looked at cell pellets and media and just as I described, we followed this um, scene or scenario for the studies. The deuterium depleted water did not, and this is, I'm jumping to the data so we can um, talk about some specifics in more detail. Um, we did not see any, uh, any difference as far as glucose uptake or <coughs> complete oxidation or glycogen synthesis um, in any of the um, cell lines, and I'm going to uh, show you uh, just what we found as far as um, glucose consumption. This is uh, a, a, a milligram per 72 uh, hours and by million cells, and if, if we, as we look at the um, uh, differences in the pancreatic cancer as well as the lung cancer cell, cell line or, or the breast cancer cell lines, we did not see any significant change as far as glucose uptake, and obviously this is a three-culture study, so the standard, standard deviations are uh, somewhat high in some of the groups, but this is a, a pilot study, so we were just uh, uh, trying to understand the effect of 150, 150, and 25 ppm water on uh, glucose metabolism. But anyways, there was no significant uh, uptake, increase or decrease in glucose uptake. Now, <clears throat> interestingly, when we looked at the pentocycle flux relative to glycolysis, um, it was decreased in one of the cell lines. I, I, I'd like to point out that uh, there's only one common metabolic effect to be found, and uh, I'm going to talk about fatty acid synthesis later. But yet, the cell lines responded somewhat differently to deuterium depletion whenever they responded. And uh, this is a function or this is a functionality that would tell you how much NADPH or how efficiently NADPH is produced in these cell lines, how uh, effective the oxidative branch of the pentocycle is. And as you can see, there was a significant change only in the decrease after all deuterium depletion scenarios in myopancreatic adenocarcinoma cell lines, while the other two cell lines did not respond really uh, to deuterium depletion as far as oxidative uh, ribosynthesis versus glycolysis, gl glucose going through glycolysis. And the MCF7 breast cancer cell line was actually with the 125 uh, ppm water, it showed um, an increase uh, in this study size, did not show any significant values, yet there, is, there was a trend. Now, this number on the y-axis tells you exactly of every glucose molecule that enters the cell, how many of them went through the oxidative branch of the pentocycle and got returned into glycolysis through the non-oxidative branch of the pentocycle. 
uh, which is uh, five out of a hundred between five to six out of a hundred, meaning that five percent, five to six percent of glucose goes through the oxy branch, which was decreased significantly in MIA cell lines. And the technology <coughs> works in a certain way as glucose enters, as I told you, there's two carbons labeled in the one and two position, and glycolysis will process this glucose uh, toward glycolysis um, through glycolysis towards lactate, and in the meantime, there is a loss of carbon from the first position of, of, of glucose and ribose is formed, which is after formation, it's recycled into, uh, through these enzymes, which are transkylase, transadolase, into glycolysis, and then the process goes very similar as far as high glucose or the six carbon product, fructose is, is broken down into lactate. But what's really interesting is that lactate that is produced through glycolysis directly is going to have two carbon substitutions in the second and third carbon of lactate in the plasma or in the media, while glucose that goes through the oxy branch of the pentose cycle and goes through glycolysis, it will have only one carbon substitution. So using mass spectrometry and GCMS and, and gas chromatography, we can always accurately determine what is the fractional synthesis of lactate through these various patterns, um, uh, more specifically through the oxy branch of the pentose cycle. And uh, according to our results, which is very common in tumor cells, about five to six percent goes through the some tumor cells. In liver cells, it's much higher, about 15, 20 percent of glucose goes through the oxy branch of the pentose cycle, and there's a, a, a tissue phenotype a kind of marker value of this lactate based on the carbon substitutions and which reflects on the glycolysis versus pentose cycle flux. But anyways, this is the reaction, more specifically this NADPH producing reduction, and this hydrogen is used in, this comes from water, and this hydrogen is used for de novo fatty acid synthesis. Now, looking at RNA ribose um, synthesis for nucleic acid or, or, or ribonucleic acid production, uh, which is, again, it's a different story as lactate production, but RNA ribose would be generated from glucose in the media. And uh, the 25 ppm water decreased this value in the MIA pancreatic adenocarcinoma cell line, very consistent as what we would see with the lactate product producing pattern. But in the H441 and the MCF7 breast cancer cell lines, there was no difference. So this indicates, uh, again, that there is a uh, tumor cell specific response to. Um, the deuterium depletion, and uh, it seems that the, the pancreatic cancer cell line, the MIA cell line, is responding to deuterium depletion through the oxidative branch of the pentose cycle. So, <clears throat> again, for ribonucleic acid synthesis, this is our glucose that comes in, and through the oxidative branch, there is a uh, carbon loss, and through the non oxidative branch, there is a uh, carbon, uh, preserved carbon um, uh, con configuration in the, in, the, in the ribose, and this actually, based on where the substitutions are, we can differentiate among the oxy versus non oxy transkylase, transadolase. This particularly is transkylase, which actually transfers a keto group from top of fructose onto uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Obviously, if there is triosphosphate isomerase activity, then the bottom two uh, carbons can get labeled in, um, uh, in uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So there's a number of scenarios which will be um, disposed um, in this particular uh, scenario, but for this study, we were actually looking at the total labeling and more specifically how much uh, glucose is accumulating or ribose is accumulating accumulating through the oxidative branch of the pentose sac, and that was inhibited by deuterium depletion. Now, the TC cycle substrate flux is, again, it's a very important measure of energy production and cell survival, and that seemed to be more responsive in the F MCF7 breast cancer cell line. And what you can see here is that in particular with the 25 ppm water, the labeling in glutamate, which is actually the product of pyruvate entering the TCA cycle either through uh, uh, pyruvate carboxylase or pyruvate dehydrogenase, uh, eventually uh, 
through citrate and isocitrate formation, the certain labeling scenario in glutamate would allow us to determine a number of things. And, and one is how many times the cycle turned over, how effective this uh, carbon dioxide release is from glucose, and this was not affected. Um, and how uh, effectively uh, 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 glutamate production is from alpha ketoglutarate. And alpha ketoglutarate and glutamate are in equilibrium, so this is a good <laughs> marker, you know, um, uh, a marker that can actually characterize the TC cycle uh, function in tumor cells. And as I showed you, the only responsive cell line as far as uh, TC cycle flux goes was this MCF7 breast, breast cancer cell line. So um, obviously we were uh, more interested than in finding out what is the common metabolic change that we can observe in all tumor cell lines. And interestingly, um, there was um, a unanimous yet different species of fatty acid synthesis were decreased, but in, uh, for example, in myopancreatic cancer cell lines, there was a decrease in palmitate as well as in lignocerate synthesis, and this is a saturated uh, long-chain fatty acid participating in membrane synthesis. And there was also a decrease in, interestingly, not in fatty acid, but in cholesterol de novo synthesis in the F MCF7 breast tumor cell lines. And, um, just to show you how effective the treatment was, um, in myopancreatic adenocarcinoma cell lines, the lignocerate uh, rate of labeling, which you can see here by numbers, um, in the 72 hours experiment, about 60% of lignocerate um, was labeled in myopancreatic cancer cell lines. It decreased those dependently after 50 and 25 PP, D, 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 ppm DDU water. In myopancreatic cell lines, also palmitate synthesis was down after 25 ppm water um, um, significantly. And these long-chain saturated fatty acids are membrane components. And um, in the MCF7 breast cell line, there was, the, there was a decrease in cholesterol synthesis. Again, this was a, those, at least the, the higher depletion uh, induced uh, more a more robust effect in decreasing uh, cholesterol synthesis. So truly the, the, the question um, of how would decreased long chain saturated fatty acid affect tumor cell metabolism or rate of proliferation is, is probably a, a more complex question and obviously this study is sufficient to think more about how to go after these uh, mechanisms, but definitely all these fatty acid species that I've been talking about are very important and very critical um, fatty acids for cell proliferation just simply because they are the source of cell membranes. And interestingly, um, some of the long chain saturated ones and cholesterol in, in membrane, their function is to to actually anchor certain proteins and make the membranes more rigid as far as uh, allowing the cell uh, membrane proteins to function properly, while other parts of the membrane more, more uh, prone to contain palmitate or oleate, which are actually with less chain length and more oily, meaning that actually the, the membrane is more fluid. And um, there might be important roles of these fatty acids in nuclear membrane synthesis, which is the first step of DNA, replica DNA replication and packaging before the cell proliferation process actually gets completed. So, <clears throat> and just looking at, again, for fatty acid synthesis, there is a citrate shuttle. Citrate shuttle will actually generate oxaloacetate, but the label part is carried towards uh, uh, cholesterol synthesis, and this is how cholesterol gets labeled. This was decreased in MCF7 cells, and as far as long-chain fat saturated fatty acids, they, they may become all labeled, meaning that uh, if you use a uh, fairly high enrichment of glucose tracer, then your fatty acids can be labeled, and then completely almost, or if you use a tracer, which is a uniformly labeled fatty acid, then you can uh, um, obviously follow up all the scenarios that we have observed with glucose. So there are some new ideas and studies that are 
obviously uh, capable of focusing on, on just fatty acid production synthesis, which seems to be the common uh, effect in these tumor cell lines as far as the metabolic effect of DD uh, deuterium depletion goes. So um, as a short conclusion, uh, we found that, in fact, decreased deuterium to hydrogen ratios seem to regulate sterile synthesis as well as fatty acid precursor synthesis. Um, and this may affect the rate of divisions uh, of cellular systems or explain why and how, from the mechanism point of view, maybe DD, deuterium depleted water is able to affect tumor cell physiology in the desirable manner. Again, um, obviously, these studies need to be followed up with uh, certain tracers and, and specifically finding out what the mechanisms are, are and what are the good markers that will differentiate tumor cell phenotype from another tumor cell, truly what is the optimum ratio of DD uh, depletion when we need to switch or increase depletion to actually uh, overcome the adoptive, obvious adoptive effects of this, uh, of the cells or metabolic networks to deuterium depletion. But in fact, uh, believe, we believe that this is a good start uh, to find out exactly how to advance in the field and how to use DDW as, a, as an effective treatment in cancer. Thank you very much. So that said, uh, Uh, thank you for your presentation. If uh, you, you said that finally the DDW can consider as, as the inhibitory factor of the fatty acid synthesis, can we say that somehow we could reduce the fatty acid synthesis? The well, um, I, I, I think um, fatty acid synthase is, a, is, a, is a, a, a huge complex. It's a protein that swims in the cytoplasm. It's ac actually anchored to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And what what happened or what may happen is <clears throat> to explain these effects, we need to bring in metabolic control analysis, which will tell you exactly how the enzymes' uh, kinetics, uh, including elasticity, changes when deuterium is replaced with uh, light hydrogens, meaning that probably what happens is that this enzyme holds hydrogen in one hand and ha has the acetate units which need to be actually brought into in a certain kinetics to uh, this process pr uh, proceed appropriately. So this may not be an enzyme inhibitor but enzyme function inhibitor, right. meaning that it specifically inhibits this process. Enzyme activity may not change or even protein expression of the enzyme may not change, yet the function is the enzyme is definitely affected. Okay, thank you. So th the question would be if we take an anti-cancer drug, and if you should compare the results that you can get with the flux, fluxes and all these things, to compare that effect, what an anti-cancer drug can cause, with the effect of the deuterium depleted water, what, how, what would you say that, the, the, what is the ratio, how, how strong effect can you consider the, what we can say with DDW? Um, yeah, it's a very good uh, question. Actually, uh, C75, which is a Merck drug, um, it, it, it is developed against fatty acid synthase. So it is, in fact, a targeted pharmaceutical compound for inhibiting fatty acid synthase, because actually fatty acid synthase is now a uh, very prominent target in cancer research. Um, if you look at uh, C75 and compare the effect with DDW, the 25 ppm is just as effective as C75 at 100 micromolar range. Now, interestingly, if you use natural products of fatty acid inhibitors, just like uh, there's luteolin, which is a tea, green tea product, uh, surprisingly, using the same dose head-to-head -head comparison with C75 luteolin or DDW, they have practically the same effect as far as inhibiting. So their efficacy is very comparable with, with pharmaceutical drugs. Again, the mechanism is very different as far as how they achieve this phenomenon. Uh, obviously, we need to know exactly how the kinetics, enzyme kinetics, adapt to 
these different treatment scenarios, but in the first 72 hours run in cell cultures in vitro, we can show the same efficacy of DDW as uh, compared with pharmaceutical drugs that are targeted against fatty acid synthase. Any other question?